Hey everyone, welcome back to That's Cakeable. I'm Janine, and this week I had a very special order from a very, very special girl. My granddaughter turned three. The request this year was a dinosaur cake. Not that sort of dinosaur cake. The specs were she had to be pink, she had to be sparkly. So that's what I did, Nanny delivered. I hope you enjoy this week's video. So this week I've done things a little bit differently. It's more of a walkthrough. Now if you would like a full tutorial on how I did this, I can definitely arrange for that to happen, but it is very in depth. So just let me know in the comments below if that's what you'd like and I can make it happen. But for now, I'll walk you through. So I made this structure using threaded rod and MDF board, and I built up the underbelly using Rice Krispie Treats, which I let set overnight to make it easier to carve. Here I am revisiting the next day after I've added a little bit of a tail so that I can adhere Rice Krispies to the tail. I go ahead and carve the shape that I want out of that belly now once the Rice Krispies have set up, they are so easy to carve, it's heaven. Now I go ahead and use a really thick ganache to ganache the outside of those Rice Krispie treats to make a nice smooth surface for us to work with when we add our fondant later on. I use a combination of a offset spatula and an acrylic smoother. Because it's rounded, the acrylic smoother helps me get those nice round edges. So now the stacking process begins. I used eight inch square white chocolate cake that I had marbled with pink and purple so that once we cut in, she looked pretty. Filled that with vanilla Swiss meringue buttercream and a raspberry curd, a homemade raspberry curd. Stacked them on top of each other and just rounded them off with a serrated knife to get a nice fat dinosaur. Just take your time with this part, turning it around, getting the right shape. Standing back and eyeballing is always really important too. Checking at all times with my template, because yes, I'd made a template. The next thing I did was made some cake clay, and that's basically just a cake pop mix. So I used my cake scraps and some white chocolate ganache. You can use buttercream as well, but ganache is a lot more sturdy. Mix them together into like a cake pop dough and then use that to build up the sides of the belly because I really wanted this to be a chubby dinosaur. She's getting cuter and fatter by the second. Ended up using the cake clay to round her all out so that she's nice and even. Already looking cute. There are a few sections that I've missed out here. As you can see, I've already done the tail. I built up her legs too. But like I said, if you'd like a full tutorial on this, just let me know in the comment section below and I'd be happy to oblige. Then I went ahead and used a reasonably thick ganache to cover the rest of the cake. Once again, using my offset spatula and my flexi smoother to get around those nice round edges for the chubby look. Now I've added a headboard that I'd cut and I'm make, repeating the same process using the Rice Krispie Treats. I built it up quite large so that I could carve it down, but we just want the general shape. Once again, I left that overnight, came back in the next morning, wardrobe change, and carve down the head to the size that I wanted. Watch your fingers, that was really close. She looks odd now, but bear with me. Using cake clay once again, I filled out those chubby little cheeks and I start making the chin and forming the shape of the head that I really, really want. Now I've marked a line across where I want the eyes to be and I'm using some circle cutters to cut out the sections where I want the eyes to be inserted. I'd made the eyes ahead of time so I knew what size I needed. And then very painstakingly carve out the sections for the eyes. 
That looks scary, right? Yeah, it's not just me. That looks scary. So now I go ahead and ganache the head in the same way that I did the underbelly, that I did the rest of the body and the tail. Flexi Smoothers Offset Spatula. And then she is ready to rock and roll. Now I made these eyes, they're completely edible. I made them using edible images and poured sugar. I can also give you a tutorial on those if you'd like to know how to do them. I took some photos as I went because sometimes when you put the eyes in, you think they're in straight, you stand back and it looks cross-eyed. But if you take photos and have a look, you'll eventually get which way the eyes are meant to be pointing. I built up around the eyes with some modeling chocolate and I did the same around the sides of the belly for the cute little belly folds. Just use some modeling chocolate. Look at the hard yakka I'm putting in there. So the reason it was so hard to roll that out is it's a mixture 50-50 modeling chocolate and fondant. So it's a lot more firm, but a lot easier to use when you've got seams and I'm going to have seams. So I'm covering the head and as you can see, there's folds because it's spherical in nature. You're going to have folds. That's why I use 50-50. You can rub out the seams with the heat from your hands and we didn't even know they were there. All done. Now I cut out around the eyes with my X-Acto knife, revealing those gorgeous emerald green, emerald green eyes. Now using a combination of my fingers and a chiseled shape, sugar shaper, I've gone in and started sculpting around the eyes to get the right shape. This is another one of those things that takes time. You have to stand back, look at it, decide if that's what you like, go back in, but eventually they come good. But go ahead and do that with both eyes. And now I used a texture mat to go around her face and put some texture in. I'm pretty sure this was like a crocodile skin or um, handbag crocodile skin texture mat, but it worked. And then I use my Dresden tool to mark out where her little mouth is going. Sort of a V shape. Triceratopses have like almost little beaks and that's, yeah, the V shape. I widened that out using my chisel shaped sugar shaper. And now I'm adding a little horn right at the top, which is made completely of modeling chocolate. Place that where I want it mine the puppy in the background and then just use a snake of the 50 50 modeling chocolate and fondant to go around the outside i use my dresden tool to give that a little bit of shape and texture and it was ready i've also gone in and used my chisel tool to add the little nostrils as you can see right under the little horn and I'm making two more little horns that go on the top of her head. Doing them in exactly the same way, they're just a bit smaller. So I'm making a cake of swords. Making a cake of swords. There they are. And the same thing, just rolling out a snake of the 50-50 modeling chocolate and fondant and wrapping that around the little horns at the top, giving them a bit of texture and voila. I've also textured around the eyes a little bit too. Okay, so now I needed to build up the bottom of her legs where her hoofs, I guess their hoofs, would be. So I've just taken some modeling chocolate, cut that into four equal lengths and wrap that around the base, just sort of moulding it on as I go. Now I'm covering the body. Um, and of course I was never gonna get this in one piece, ever. 
So I just did the best I could with what I had. Once again, using the 50-50, I was able to use the palm of my hands and use the heat from my hands to rub out any seams, which was good. I got most of it done in one hit. I was pretty proud of myself. It's just the front legs needed a little bit of extra. Now for making the frill. I will tell you this took me four or five goes before I got it right. And then I didn't even film putting it in the head properly, but I'll explain it to you. So I rolled out a piece of fondant that I'd sort of measured around the head to make sure it was the right sort of fit. Took my circle cutter to make the frilled edges. And then once I'd cut all of them out, I sort of just rounded the tops out with my fingers because you don't want them too sharp. I took my paring knife and just sort of cut in a semicircle at the base so it fits onto a head better. And then I added some skewers into three points, the top point and the two um, immediate side points. And I used my fingers to rub on either side so I could make sort of a, a ridge. So I just used my fondant smoother on the top to sort of keep the integrity of the shape of the frill as I went. And there it is ready to go. Now to add them, I pre-made the holes in her head and then pushed them in. And I ended up adding skewers to the two side frills also. Now I took some modeling chocolate and made tiny little horns on the top of all the frills. Textured them and they're ready to go. Now the next day I decided to glitterize her, cover everything up because you're gonna find glitter in places you never knew glitter existed for a really long time after you use this stuff. So I covered her in some vegetable shortening, removed all the horns and covered the eyes with some, cover the eyes, what did I cover the eyes with? Baking, no, not baking paper, paper towel. Covered her eyes with some paper towel. Then I just dusted that glitter all over her. I made some little spots to go on her body and I dusted them in a different color glitter, a contrasting color, it was very bright pink. You'll see here they're added to her face. I ended up taking them off her face. I didn't like how they looked afterwards, so. But I just attached the other ones with a little bit of water um, and popped them randomly around her body. And there she is, popped her horns back on, uncovered her eyes. Don't really want a blind dinosaur. Although I don't discriminate. No. Blind dinosaur's cool. Do you think you saw us? <laughs> Covered the board with some green royal icing and then some desiccated coconut that I had covered green to look a bit like grass. And then I just did some fondant details, some foliage, some little pink flowers, just to make it pretty. Ribbon the board, I've added a little mini birthday cake there. And there she is, gorgeous, pretty as a picture, all ready for a very, very special third birthday girl. She loved her cake, absolutely adored it. And I've gotta say, I really, really love making it and I love how she turned out. As I said, if you'd like to see a full tutorial on how she was created, including structure from beginning to end, please just let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make it happen. Open the door, get on the floor. Everybody walk the dinosaur. Open the door, get on the floor. Stop doing it. Yeah. Back to being so rest. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me again this week. If you could, I would love if you could like and subscribe. I'm about 14 subs off my first 100, so getting there would be magical. Don't forget to hit the notification bell down the bottom so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And while you're here, don't forget to check out my other videos on my page it would be greatly appreciated and you might get something out of it thank you once again for joining me i will see you next time and until then don't forget to get your cake on bye